All right. I'm going to level with you all. Today we need to talk about levels of measurement. So we've already talked about types of data. We talked about how we can get data through sampling. So now we want to talk about the levels of measurement that we can get from our data. So we've got four different types of levels of measurement. The first is nominal data. And nominal data is basically your categorical data. You have different um, categories or answers or responses and they're different but we can't order them. So if we ask people to tell us what their favorite color is, we know that someone who says red is providing a different answer than someone that says blue, but we're unable to say that red is greater than blue or vice versa. So we have categories that are unorderable. So similar to nominal is ordinal. An ordinal is data which can be ordered, but we don't have a way of measuring the differences in the order. So some examples of this could be that if we ask people how satisfied they were after they had dinner at a particular restaurant, they could say not satisfied, uh, somewhat satisfied, or satisfied. Um, and we can put those in order from least to greatest in terms of how much satisfaction they had. But measuring exactly how much satisfaction we increased going from not satisfied to somewhat satisfied is not possible. And this is an example of ordinal. Right? If you wanted to rank the, uh, the best types of music, right? we know that country music would be at the bottom, but we don't have a way of articulating exactly how much worse it is than the second worst type of music. All right, so nominal and ordinal data generally comes in the form of non-numeric answers. Uh, we generally can't apply any kind of mathematical analysis to those values. The next two types of data measurement um, generally come in numeric values and we can generally do some analysis on it, um, but there's some key differences between the two. So the first type is called interval data. Interval data is numeric data to where we can measure the difference in a, a val one value to another. So for example, let's consider uh, degrees Celsius. We know that um, whenever we're measuring degrees in Celsius, that zero degrees is the freezing point of water and 100 degrees is the boiling point of water. And so if we say that we have something that's at 40 degrees Celsius and something that's at 50 degrees Celsius, we can say that the 50 degrees Celsius object is 10 degrees Celsius more than the 40 degrees Celsius um, object. And so we have a very clear measurement in the difference between those two values. However, with interval data, we can't compare ratios of data. We can't say that an object that is 10 degrees Celsius and it, it has half as much temperature as an object that has 20 degrees Celsius. And the reason for that is because with interval data, the value of zero is not meaningful. And what we mean by that is it has a meaning in the sense that zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water, 
But zero degrees Celsius does not mean the absence of temperature. And not being the absence of temperature means that when we increase from zero degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius, we don't go from no temperature to temperature. And that means that going from 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius doesn't mean a doubling of temperature. So for interval data, it's generally numeric. We can measure the differences between values, uh, but we do not have a meaningful value of zero. So in contrast, we have ratio data. And this is again going to be numerical data. And this is going to be a situation where zero is meaningful. And this is going to be a situation that you're probably familiar with in any science class that you've taken. Length, measurement, time, uh, weight, uh, all of these things are situations where we can tell the difference between data and that zero is meaningful. Whenever we have a weight of zero, that means there is no weight. Whenever we have a length of zero, that means that there is no length. And so that means that if we have a piece of string that is six inches long, and we have a piece of string that is 12 inches long, we can say that that second string is twice as long as the first string. So this, this fact that zero is meaningful and generally means zero, there's an absence of whatever we're measuring at zero, means that ratios are preserved. Ratios are preserved and they're meaningful. So these are the four types of data measurements um, that we're going to talk about this semester. Now we need to talk about one more thing before we're done today, and that's frequency. Now when I say frequency, the first thing that probably comes to mind is the 2000s thriller featuring Dennis Quaid about a son who tries to save his father through a time connection through the radio waves. That's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about frequency as in how often something happens. Whenever we're collecting data, it's not uncommon for us to get repeated data. If we're asking how many siblings do you have, it's not uncommon for us to get multiple responses of zero or one or two. And so we can ask ourselves whenever we're collecting that data, how many times did we see that particular value? And so what we can use is we can use frequency tables. So a frequency table has a situation where we have a list of outcomes, and then we have their frequency. So let's say, for example, that we asked people about how many siblings they have. And so the outcomes that we got were 0, 1, 2, 3, or let's classify this as 4 or more. And let's say that we ask 20 people. And of those 20 people, uh, four of them said that they had no siblings. And maybe seven of them said that they had one sibling. Uh, three of them said that they had no siblings. Uh, two of them said that they had three. And then uh, four of them said that they had four or more. And so this would give us a frequency chart. And we can look at this and be like, in our data set, we have 20 responses. Of those 20 responses, four of them are zero, seven of them are one, three of them are two, two of them are three, and four of them are four or more. And just recalling back, this how many siblings do you have would be an example of ratio data. It's all numerical. We can order it. And having two siblings is twice as many siblings as having one sibling, right? So zero is meaningful. It means that you don't have siblings. So this would be an example of ratio data. Now, sometimes it's useful to look at just bare frequencies. But a lot of times it's interesting to talk about relative frequencies as well. So relative frequencies have us switch from just the number of times that something happens to a percentage of the number of times that we saw a particular result. So to move from frequency to relative frequency, we just take the frequency that we observed and we divide it by the total number of responses. 
So in this case, we had 20 responses, and so we got zero, four out of 20, which is 0 0.20. We had uh, one res uh, the response of one seven times, so that's seven out of 20, or 0.35. Uh, we got a response of two three times, so that's three out of 20, or 0.15. We got three twice, so that's two out of 20, or 0 0.10. And we got four or more four times, which is four out of 20, or 0 0.20. And so relative frequencies are always gonna come in percentages. Whereas frequencies are going to become are going to come as whole number values, um, and depending on the situation, we may want to use frequencies or we may want to use relative frequencies. <laughs>